Hello, I'm EBM, welcome back to the channel and to the Cupra Fermentor. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with Cupra, they're now a sister or sub-brand of Seat. What GTI did for the Volkswagen brand, the sportier versions, that's what Cupra was for the Seat Leon and Ibiza Cupras, basically. It was their sports version of their cars. The Fermentor, though, now it's its own brand, is quite important, I think, because it's the first Cupra only car rather than just a rebadged somebody else's car. It does share its underpinnings, its plug-in hybrid underpinnings anyway with the Golf GTE, the Audi A3, Fev and so forth. So it's effectively another VAG car with the underpinnings that comes with it, which isn't a bad thing in Fev world, whether you agree with plug-in hybrids or not, I'm not interested in that discussion. It is a good start. VAG are pretty good at the FEV side of things. The DSG gearbox and, and other things make it usually pretty efficient. I've recently done the Octavia plug-in hybrid, for example, and I thought that one was the best on the market. But that was before I drove this. So, even though I am struggling a little bit to pigeonhole it in terms of what segment it goes in, how does this fare against all the other plug-in hybrids on the market in this sort of price bracket? <laughs> Now, Cupra for me should always be something that's fast, fun and exciting. Exciting overall, and the rest kind of comes with it. So let's see if this fits the bill. We'll start off with the looks around the outside, then I'll look at the inside and of course take it on the road to see if it is any good there. I think in terms of how it does look from the front anyway, they've got it bang on. I mean, everybody that's seen this over the last week-ish of me having this has said, I don't know what it is, but I really like it. And I have to say, I like it as well. This is one of the nicest design grills I've ever seen. It's really good. The recessed headlights, that kind of works. Lots of sharp angles. The way it splits up the front bumper here, just, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a good looking sporty sort of car. It does have that kind of Cupra element to it. And I am a bit of a fan of its looks, at least from the front. You've got these bulges, you've got lots of nice creases. The way the wings kind of bulge out and give it a big, muscular stance it just seems to fit the cupra brand so i think they've got that bang on the side has got some nice touches for me i do like this crease that goes over the rear wing uh, and i like the fact they've got rid of all the black plastic they've gone for painted stuff over the wheel arches all the usual stuff that you get on like a crossover suv type what does confuse me again though is that you've, you've got kind of like hot hatch at the front and then as you get further back it turns into an suv it, it, again it, it, it's like a well it is a hybrid in every sense it doesn't really know what it wants to be, but again, is that a bad thing? Rear entry, pretty good. I'll show you that in a second though, of course. Um, yeah, here we are. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. It does not get worse as it goes back. It just changes genre. From the rear, it carries on its kind of confusion because for me, if someone said, what sector is this car for? What category is it from? I would say this has got an SUV rear end. You got this, light bar going across there, lots of sharp angles, the Cupra badge and the logo. Nowhere does it say Fermentor though, which is a bit strange. I do like the, uh, the fact that the bumper comes out like that, you know, it's not just straight lines, it's different. And that's why I think I like it. It's not just the same as every other Euro box that gets chucked out. It does have that annoying thing though, where the boot release is next to the number plate which is just going to get filthy. I mean, not there you go, I've got mud on my hands just because I'm trying to open the boot. You can, of course, open it with the key, which is here. And the boot is something which is, well, SUV-esque. And I have to say, it is a good size boot. It's definitely a kind of golf size boot, although you do lose a bit with the fact that it's a plug-in hybrid. It's not as big as the petrol only version. It's not the most practical kind of shape boot in the world, but I think, again, you could certainly leave this. There's a little bit of intrusion here and there. You've got a little bit of cubby hole storage. There's nothing underneath. Effectively, this is smaller because the petrol uh, tank is there because of the batteries that are further forward. Right, let me have a look inside now to see if the cooperiness continues. <coughs> okay, let's start with the steering wheel, which is very much Cooper. I mean, you've got the logo there and the bronze kind of highlights carry on throughout the cabin. Nice buttons, easy to use, scroll wheels. These, nice and solid, but a little bit plastic here, but yeah, you know, I can live with that. That feels good. Again, that feels nice. I do like that material there. 
that's kind of plastic meant to look like metal but it, it feels good again that's all right hard wearing and solid so far so good typical vag build on the vents really nice feel to them sturdy nice solid material on top of the dash there that's good now let me start this car which you do by pressing this pulsing button here and then this comes to life which is very easy to see i have to say uh, you can configure it uh, a lot an awful lot i'm not going to show you everything but by pressing that button that i've just shown you there you can change it to all sorts of stuff it's very much a, a virtual cockpit as it were some more nice vents there i do kind of like this bit more bronze trim going around the infotainment system now sometimes this is all right i mean once you've figured out how to use it it is kind of clunky to use you know it takes some uh, sort of instruction reading to navigate your way around and sometimes it's fast but sometimes you just press something and it takes forever of course it's not doing it now because i'm sat in the car trying to show you but it does kind of lag occasionally but it, it's irrelevant because it does android auto and apple carplay wirelessly and that works brilliantly so it doesn't really matter for me now this is the 200 just over 200 brake version they do a 240 brake version where you get cupra modes and a button there and a start button there so there are some differences here uh, which i'll uh, talk about later on in the video nice place for your phone down here some wireless uh, charging as well and it's good i quite like the way it slopes away because a you can't really see the screen so it doesn't distract you and it doesn't fly out if you put your foot down or anything you've got a bit more storage either side of the gear lever uh, backwards for drive forwards for reverse of course parking uh, electronic handbrake here couple of other buttons it's uh, yeah it's it's all right it feels okay i would say it's premium-esque you've got cup holders here for your bottle that will only fit a cup but i suppose it's okay uh, and you've got an armrest there which is nice and underneath of course you've got some more close storage with a 12 volt socket yeah that, that, that's a decent one there now the glove box is this going to be a typical oh no it's a full width one well done cupra actually a decent glove box for a change now the seats these are phenomenally comfortable i like the design i really do rear entry as i said earlier is pretty good that seat is for someone who's well above six foot let's have a look well yeah plenty of space tons of space in fact a uh, couple of usb ports there reasonably solid you do have a pretty big transmission tunnel which renders this Mm, i won't say useless but it's going to be for a small child only nice seats i do like the design of these seats if you've got any short kids or young kids anyway it's got a very high waistline as it goes further back so they might not see much out but yeah i think this is uh, a pretty nice place to be to be honest i think most people will uh, will agree with that i'm not saying it's the best in the world but it's far from the worst right so i've done enough of the boring driving for work yeah to know that out of a full battery you're looking at between 20 and 25 miles. That's not bad then, is it, I really? I got close to I mean, 30, but that was no heating driving yeah, economically. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's pretty much standard, although the Octavia Fev, which basically was the same thing underneath, you got at least another five miles out of that. Did you? Yeah. I'm not sure because of the Bigger sporty tire. element. Well, the tyres are the same size, aren't they? 235 section, which I, I don't think know, the but... Octavia had. So yeah, driving this all week, very cosy. Yeah. Very comfortable. And I have to say, one of the fiercest heated steering wheels I've ever had. Oh, is it? Proper. I mean, it basically, if I put it up there, it burnt my hand. That's what you want, though. Exactly. I've, I've yes. felt some of them where you, you do touch the steering wheel, and after about 10 minutes, you might get a tiny bit of warmth. <laughs> yeah. It's like a heated seat. I want it after it's heated up that you could, you know, you could you could cook bacon on it. Yep. Yep. I'm old. I have no feeling in my fingers anymore or anywhere else. It's what you've done to your ass then, so you can't feel that for <laughs> your <Curry>. seats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm in sports mode. Shall I leave it in automatic? See how. Uh, good i mean it's a dsg well, it's a dsg it it's a dual good. clutch it should i mean they usually yeah it does the usual thing of holding its revs too long yeah. the dsg tends to gives you noise as opposed to power but you can obviously control it speed, by a manual the steering's nice i have to say they've got the steering weighted. pretty nice and this isn't the cooper version remember well that, that stiffens it up a bit it sort of runs out of oomph, doesn't it? It, it doesn't runs, play a lot. It sort of changes it, it gets uh... It needs that noise, even the fake noise. Yeah, I so... Don't, I don't mind fake noise because ultimately well, I'm hearing it instead of the people outside. It's 
breaking like. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I think you get better flicking 50, it through. 60. 60. Yeah, it's quick. So it's, 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 it, it's reasonable. Yeah, I think so. But I want the full fat version, the 240. Uh, it's quite tall, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, even though the car itself isn't very tall. It's it quite look, I, think, well, I think it looks quite squat because it's long. I think the proportions of it are just so. Well, yeah. It just needs that noise, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just not got that, uh, has it? Is this a good hybrid because you can have fun and then you can just go in full electric mode for the boring stuff. What for when the, the wife's in the car? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You have know, cumulative yeah, you yeah, full yeah, electric. Yeah. For those that aren't willing to let go of but a petrol engine. I think it's a nice compromise, this, yeah. isn't it? So has this become the the next thing you get? You know, you, you've got a Mark 7 Golf GTI and you're thinking of you, you trading become, it. You're becoming sensible or you think, oh, I have to go into city centre, I need something electric. Yeah. But I'm not ready to let go of a fun weekend car, but I can't afford two cars. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's for the petrol head that's not willing to let go, but willing to dip the toe in. I think so. That sort of thing, isn't it? So it's a nice stepping stone, isn't it? I guess, yeah. Because whether people agree with FEVs or not, some people will choose a petrol engine because they like a petrol engine. Mm -hmm. Purely from the enjoyment level, not because of the environment, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, how yeah, people yeah. are. It is an SUV, it's an SUV coupe hatchback. No, it is, we've no idea. <laughs> it could be anything. So it's, it's a child's car. The man child's car. Man child's car. Because, no, no, I'm not ready to not have fun yet, but I'm going to have to have something electric ish. I think it's one of those cars you could get if your missus went, well, I've got to have an SUV. I've been looking at a T Rock. And you go, oh, oh, you'd get away with this, wouldn't you? I think you would, yeah, you go. Ooh. It's a Cupra. It's like it's one up than a. Well, it's either that Volkswagen. or a T Rock. Yeah. I sent you a, a picture, didn't you? Was it the oh, T-Rock? Rock convertible. A convertible T-Rock? Oh. oh my God, I'll, I'll put it up if we've got it who, somewhere. Who in the right mind? Who would buy that? Why? Oh. Do you know that kid at school? Yeah. Who always wanted to be cool? So he's giving himself his own nick nick. He's nickname. called himself T-Rock. He's called himself T-Rock. He's oh. called Tony. Everyone else calls him something else, but he said, no, no, yeah. I'm T-Rock when he starts a new school. <laughs> Definitely got four words. Starts with T, ends with T. <laughs> now, do you want to try the voice control? Do I? You don't have to press the button. You can give it, you know, like Hey Google would wake something oh, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Or Alexa. Hey Cupra. No, no, it's not Hey Cupra. Hey. Holla holla. Oh, no, no. Holla holla. Holla holla. <laughs> holla holla. To wake it up, you holla, holla holla. Hula hula. Hula Hooper. Drive to London. London. Yes. Please say the name of the street. London Street. <laughs> Please say the house number. 69. <laughs> oh God, here we go. There's the first. <clears throat> there are multiple entries for 69. Please say the line number. Or use the Apple Android yeah, Auto, yeah, CarPlay, CarPlay. Wireless, wireless jobby. I've got to say, I do like, I mean, it's, it's a nice size screen, isn't it? The only thing I'd say is that when you're driving, it kind of is so in your face, it kind of distracts you. It sounds yeah. bizarre, but I think it needs to be a bit lower. I don't understand why they've basically taken a Cupra, full on sports. And just diluted it. And, and like, yeah. Well, I think it's become a trim level. Surely all Cupras should have a Cupra yeah, button. Yeah. So if you're going to go for a fev, go for the, the bigger one. Go for the proper one. The 240. Um, yeah. Because not just for performance, but because... It's not a Cooper, is it? It's not. It? That's what I mean. Is this a it's Sayat? A it's a trim level. And that's the Cooper. Well, it's a trim level, this now, isn't it? Yeah. This starts at around 34-ish. And that's list again. I imagine it's a starting yeah. price, but it's a new fair, car. That's not a bad price for the size for of the vehicle. For a fev, no. Um, so 34-ish for, for this to 200-ish one. Mm -hmm. Brake, as in 200 brake horsepower one. The 240, I think, starts at 38-ish. So this, this has got sun visor on this side. It's just holding the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is full electric mode. Oh. Quiet. Now, I do have one beef. Every time you come up to a roundabout or a junction, a massive box on here, I'll see if I can get it to come up at some point, comes up saying, take your foot off the accelerator pedal. Presumably they say, well, you don't need to. You're coming up to a roundabout, you know, be more efficient. All the time, awesome. and it's doing my head in. Do you know, that's almost as bad. One thing that really bugs me 
in cars is wouldn't they tell you what gear you should be in? <laughs> yeah. You should be in fifth. You should be in. No, oh, I'm I've, coming up to a corner. I've come out for a drive by myself to get away from this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop telling me what to do. No, the Octavia is, is the one you buy with your head, isn't it? The, the estate, especially. Yeah. That just does everything without yeah. complaining. This does have a few compromises on the practicality front. The boot, for example, is nowhere near as big, but it does it in a lot more style. That, this is it's the, the one. The same un, underneath. underneath. Things. This is the one I would go for. You think? Just because it. It Over the deep. VRS as well. Uh, if it was a 240 model, then probably, yeah. Yeah. If we're, if we're, yeah, if we're comparing oranges and oranges. Yeah, yeah. This is just over 35 grand, the mm -hmm. uh, the 200 brake FEV. Yeah. Let's ignore the petrol ones, because there's two 2 litre petrol versions as well. Right. Uh, 1.4 TSI. Uh, just under 13 kilowatt hour battery. You've got 200 brake, 330 newton metres of torque. That's quite a lot. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Not 67.8 in this. It did feel the fraction quicker. Vag do have a habit of underestimating and they're not 60, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Top speed of 127 for well, if you're really bothered. Um, they say 37 miles, but as I said, I had 20, 20 miles to 25. Well, that's sort of. 15 in winter, basically, and 25 in yeah, summer. Yeah. So there you go, you're an average of 20. This is my slight problem with what they're doing with the Cooper brand. The entry level, 27 and a half grand, not just a petrol. Yeah. 148 brake horsepower. Why not just stick with the performance stuff? Yeah. Yeah, why not just do that? The 245VZ2 FEV starts at just over £40,000. But then when you're spending forty pounds there's a lot of stuff you can get for £40,000. It's Model 3 territory. Yeah, you And I know, some, you know the idea of FEV means yeah, you might not yeah, be able yeah. to get a full well, electric. Model 3 might mean that you can at least charge it when you need cheaper to. Cheaper Polestar 2. So where does it sit? Because clearly it's not the sports version because they're doing the, well, 148 brake horsepower. Well, it, that's that, that that's standard these days, isn't it? I must think, well, it's probably because they're not producing enough variation of cars at the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's not enough bad cars <laughs> yeah. based on the same chassis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lordy. This is going to really appeal to the company car market, though, isn't it? I think so. If you were thinking, Tavia VRS, Golf GTE. This. 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 I would go for this. Yeah. You, I think you've hit the nail on the head, haven't you? It's just different. Yeah, I would get this because it's different. Because it's not a standard out of the box fag car. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got you've got a Skoda, you've got an Octavia, you've got a Golf. This is different. Yeah, it's be, you've got a what? Got a Fermentor. So the last hundred and thirty nine miles, this apparently says it's done fifty six point four, but then seven point nine miles per kilowatt hour. All I know is that if you wanted to, you could probably get away with using one tank every couple of months in this because majority of yeah, journeys, yeah. like every FEV, will be done on electric mode. A plug-in hybrid, I always say, is for people who have an unreliable charging network. Self-charging cars, this is what you need. Self-charging? Yeah. What is that? That means you don't have to charge it. It's, it's basically, it's something wow. for nothing. Really? Yeah. What if you don't put fuel in it? Well, judging by the advert, it's self-charging. Wow. You, you, you don't, so you don't fuel. have to put petrol in it No, either. no, it just gives you something for nothing. That's amazing. This is 20 centimetres longer than a Golf, but 20-ish centimetres shorter than an Octavia. So it's almost like they've designed it just to sit in the, in the middle. Have we found where Cooper goes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Between Skoda and Volkswagen? Well, Good start for me, for Cooper. Mm, I think so. I'm liking it. And if they can replicate this interior with the Cooper Born, the full electric one, that's going to be exciting. So Cooper, if you're watching this, get me into the Born as soon as possible, please, because the ID3 was a letdown for us personally. Yep. If you want a Fev, you're adamant you have to have a Fev. This or the Octavia. Yeah. I think the Octavia will be a bit cheaper, but you'll feel more special in this. You will. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right. Well, thank you for watching, as always, guys. I will see you when well next week, clearly. So. Um, See you later. Bye. Bye.